So we'll just start out laying down here. Take a few minutes to adjust your shoulders away from your ears and kind of slightly tilt your chin towards your chest. Relax your arms and take your palms to your low belly. So you can choose to either start out with your knees bent and your feet planted, or you can also just stretch your legs out long. Really depends on you and your spine and your low back. Some, sometimes uh, stretching the legs out long could be a lot for the low back, for the lumbar spine. So feel free to customize this first shape for your body. So with the hands resting on the low belly, I'll, I'll introduce you to a particular breath technique, which is called Veloma breath. And in this breath, you're imagining that your torso is like a cylinder or a vase that you're filling up from the bottom to the top. So the inhale is three parts. It's like you're taking three sips of air in. The top of that third inhalation, you're at your maximum lung capacity. And then the exhale is one long breath out. Okay, so we'll try it together a few times. So the hands are resting on the low belly so that when you breathe in, you can feel your belly press into your hands. Starting with your inhale at the very base of the spine, breathe in just right below the belly button. Second sip of air in goes from the belly button to the chest. And from the chest up to the crown of the head. One long exhale all the way out. Try it again, inhaling base of the spine to the navel, navel to the chest, chest to the crown of the head. Exhale all the air out. Again, inhale base of the spine to the navel, navel to the heart heart to the crown. Long exhale. So let's try it three more times and see if you can just get the hang of it on your own, silently imagining this torso in three parts being filled up with your breath. Maybe there's a slight pause at the top of your inhalation. And then one long, smooth, slow exhale. So your next exhalation, let your breath return to normal. So that's a neutral inhale, neutral exhale through the nose. Notice how that feels. And notice how the body feels today. If your legs are stretched out long, start to bend the knees and plant the feet. And just notice what your pelvis feels like in this really neutral position. There might be a slight lift of the low back. It's really natural. It's a good thing to have a, a slight curve at the lumbar spine. So we'll do a little bit of a pelvic rock to prepare the body for the longer hold shapes that are to come. This is a technique that is useful to help activate the parasympathetic nervous system. 
and to signal to the muscles, the tendons and the lig ligaments that something more is coming. So it's not quite a shock to the system. You can leave your hands at your low belly as long as that feels okay on the shoulders and the elbows. In your inhale, you're gonna press down into your tailbone, lift your belly up so the low back moves away from the mat. So there's a bigger arch at the lumbar spine. This is your inhale. In your exhale, release the low back down into the mat. You're slightly tipping the tailbone up, but your pelvis is still heavy on the floor. So it's really not a big movement. It might be a few inches for you. Your inhale, pressing down into your tailbone, low back is moving away from the mat. And your exhale, releasing the low back back to the mat, tailbone slightly lifts. Deep breath in, belly rises. Deep breath out, belly falls. Start to find your own rhythm, the small movement, just feel your pelvis rocking, feel your spine articulating, and feel your breath moving. Let's say three more breath rounds here. And then release the spine. Just pause, find some stillness. We'll set up for our first long held shape. We'll need something to elevate the sacrum a little bit. So this can be a folded blanket, a folded towel. It can be a pillow. It can be a block if you have blocks. It could even be a hardback book. It really depends on what kind of feedback you want from your body. So obviously the more height you add underneath your sacrum, the more intense the sensation will be. And I actually don't advocate for that. I advocate starting slow and maybe using something that's going to be like an inch or two thick. That's a little bit more forgiving, something softer, maybe like a pillow or a blanket. You can always add on, but it would just be better for your immune system, your skeletal system to start out slow. So I'm going to take a folded blanket. It's about mm, an inch and a half thick. And then fold it over once so it's just a little bit thicker. The knees will stay bent for now. Press down into your feet, lift your sacrum up, and then slide that prop, whatever you're using, underneath the pelvis. So the flesh of the glutes is just at the very edge of your prop. All of your pelvis is being supported by your prop. It's not so much that we're looking to place it at the low back, it's slightly below the low back that you're looking to rest. So it feels like you have a stable base. So there's a slight elevation of the hips above the heart. Really gentle inversion. From here, what I'd recommend is just starting by stretching one leg out. Maybe you start by stretching your right leg out, let that right heel rest. Notice if it feels too intense on the low back or maybe even the hip flexor. And then you can decrease that amount of lift. You could even just lie on your back and you would get probably the same kind of a benefit. For some of us, it really doesn't even take an elevation of the hips. So really up to you, your choice. You can stay just on this first side and I'll let you know when we're about halfway through and then you would change sides or you can see about extending your left leg out long as well. If you feel any sharp shooting pain, if there's anything that's too much to take deep full belly breath or that causes anxiety or more tension in the body, this is a sign to back off of the physical shape, to take a step back. If it's feeling good, 
maybe there's a slight ache, but you're able to breathe and you're able to remain calm. This is something we can work with. We'll be in this shape for a total of five minutes, so I'll let you know when two and a half minutes have passed. Can you close your eyes here, relax the back of your head, your shoulders. Find a comfortable place to rest your arms. That might be that the arms are stretched out wide. Might be that the hands are still at the low belly. Three more breath rounds if you're on that first side or if you have both legs stretched out long or about halfway through this particular shape. So if you need to change sides, now would be the time. Start by just bending your right knee first so that it meets your left foot. And then extend your left leg out long, keeping your right knee bent and your right foot planted. Again, allow your sacrum to settle in let the glutes be really relaxed. There's no tension or gripping there. If you can soften all the muscles along the posterior chain of the body, that's the back body. So what are we doing with this shape? We're starting to put a little bit of a stretch through the hip flexors, through the front of the body. Putting the hip flexors in a lengthened position and asking them to decontract. We spend a lot of times in our modern day life, uh, whether you're sitting in a chair for most of the day or driving a car, in that um, contracted position through the hip flexor. Just noticing where you're feeling that sensation really normal to feel this in the low back first.
Keep checking back in with your breath. Continue to take your breath down into the belly. And can you maintain the breath in and out through the nose while relaxing your jaw and the muscles of the face? Last two deep breath cycles here. Really slowly take your time. Start to bend your knees and plant your feet. We'll incrementally release out of this. So we'll just pause here with the knees bent and the feet planted. You're still on your prop. Let your spine reset. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Now we'll press down into the feet Lift the hips enough so that you can just slide that prop out of the way. Let your sacrum resettle onto the floor. Now that your pelvis is in the same plane as your shoulders, the back of your head and your feet, notice how that feels. Big breath in, big breath out. The low back still feels quite achy. Keeping your feet wide on your mat, you can start to sway the knees side to side. That will help release and neutralize the lumbar spine. And in your own time, we'll start to make our way up to a seat. This next shape will require probably some of your props, like maybe stacks of bolsters, pillows, blankets, or even a chair if you have one. I'm going to use my stool. This is a great shape where we're headed for those of you runners out there. So we'll kind of continue working with the front of the body. Uh, the hip flexors, and then a little bit, we'll get into the quadriceps. So, what I'd like you to do is just start out on your knees. Take one foot forward. I'm going to start with my right foot forward, bringing my right foot outside of my chair. Whatever props I'm going to stack here, you can use piles of blankets. That's totally fine. Be sure that your left knee has enough padding. You can slide another blanket underneath there if your floor is pretty hard. And then you can start to shift your hips forward, lengthen out through the back leg. And this um, height of a chair is great because you don't get to, um, it stops you from pushing your hips too far forward. Um, and some of us, you know, are more flexible and bendy than others. So it's 
this feels like it's hindering your stretch, your opening, you can move it out of the way. What I'd recommend is trying it for a few breaths and seeing what happens as you settle in. I'm gonna start the time. We'll be here on this first side for three minutes. So if you don't have um, something in the way and you can, like my cat's right here, she's just not making a very good pillow today. <laughs> But if you do have the space to kind of lean forward and tuck your chin in and relax your head, go for it. See if you can just at least soften the upper body, soften the shoulders, the jaw, the face. Nice deep breath. And just like with every shape that we take, notice where you're feeling sensation right now. Notice what's going on with that foot that's forward. So if your right foot is forward, are you rolling out to the outer edge of the foot? See if you can stay rooted through the sole of the foot. See if you can take a peek at the ankle, is it underneath the knee? Check in with your breath. Deep, slow belly breath. Two more breath cycles on this first side. And start to slowly back out. You can start to move the hips back over that left knee or whichever leg you have back. And then bring your front knee back to meet your back knee. And we'll change sides. So I'm gonna bring my left foot forward. I mentioned this on the first side, but if you do have a chair that has a back to it and you need to turn that chair off to the side so that you can really relax your forearms onto that chair, just adjust it in any way you need. So stepping the left foot outside of the legs of the chair. And then wiggling that right leg back. You can start to sink through the hips, resting your forearms, your elbows, on whatever props are supporting you. And this side might need a different level of height. We'll settle in here for our hold for three minutes. And you stay rooted through your left foot. Let your knee stack underneath your, stack on top of your ankle rather.
checking in with your breath. About three more breath cycles on this side. Let's very slowly start to back out of this. You're on your forearms, of course, walk back up to your hands. And then shift your hips back over your right knee. Bring your left knee back to meet your right. So we'll continue on this trajectory of opening the front body um, and work a little bit further into the quadricep. And um, this is gonna look different for all of us. Your shape might not look like mine. And this First, probably depends on the ankle joint. If you're able to get that ankle flat and the toe is pointing straight back behind you, then you can start to think about moving further. If your ankles are kind of flexed and the toes turn out to the side, that puts a lot of pressure on the knee joint. So highly recommend working with the ankle joint first, just seeing if you can get it kind of relaxed on the ground. And the way that you would do that is to just kind of sit back on your heels with a prop in between the ankles. So maybe you take a book or some books or pillows or a bunched up blanket in between the ankles, you sit back and then you work with that joint first. If all of that's feeling good in your body and you can do that easy peasy, no problem, then we can start to think about moving back into more of like a reclined shape and you'll build something to support yourself behind you with all of your props. So get creative. What I'm gonna do is create a little ramp with my bolster. I have a folded um, blanket that creates it more of an incline for me. And then I have extra pillows I can pile on top so I don't feel like I have to go back so far to reach my bolster. Now, what I'd recommend is trying one side at a time. So if you're coming to a seat, below your cushion. You can also sit on the edge of your cushion. This will help create a little bit more space for your ankles and your knees. So you could start out by just sitting at the very edge of that bolster cushion, whatever you're on, and then pulling one knee back, one foot back, and starting with the other knee bent. And I'll show you from this side so you can actually see what my foot's doing. So again, I'm checking out the knee joint and it feels okay, I don't feel any sharp shooting pain. My ankles, top of my foot flat, my toes are pointing straight back behind me. This tells me, okay, I can go a little bit further. I can start to sink back. That's when I start to feel that release on the top of my quadricep. This right leg, it can stretch forward or the foot can stay bent. You can also take that right foot back and do this two sides at the same time. Really your choice. We'll be in this shape for a total of five minutes. So I will give us two and a half minutes on each side or one long hold of five minutes all together. And I'll let you know when to switch sides. Again, when we're working with the front body, oftentimes these shapes put our lumbar spine in a mild compression. So you might feel this again at your low back. Of course, if it becomes too much, you sit upright, you work with your body where it is today right now. Try not to force it into anything. 
that it feels unready for. Pay attention to where you're feeling sensation. The idea is that we get into the belly of the muscle. Notice if you can feel your quadricep, if you're working with an ancillary joint of the ankle or the foot. If you're feeling any sensation in your knee, pay attention to that. Maybe you back out or add some extra props so you're sitting more upright. For those of you that are doing both of your legs together, you're about halfway through. And for those of us that need to change sides, let's do that very gently, stretching whatever leg you had bent forward and then pulling that opposite foot back. Check out the ankle first before you start to deepen anything which direction are the toes pointing and how does the knee joint feel? If the body gives you the signal to lean back, go for it. Breathing those deep, slow belly breaths. Can you take your air in and out through your nose?
Last few moments here. So if you have um, some sort of recliner situation behind you, you can leave that as it is. Let's free our legs, stretch them out long. And then lie back on, maybe it's your back or that cushion situation you've set up behind you. And wave your feet side to side. Big breath in here. Big breath out. Again, if you really need to release the low back if it's feeling quite achy, bend your knees, plant your feet wide and start to take the knees side to side again. Let's press our way up to a seat briefly so we can turn facing that cushion. I'm going to bump my left hip up to the edge of this cushion and then take my knees wide. So I have like these stag legs, two 90 degree angles. Right knee behind the sole of the left foot, left knee pointing straight off to the side of my mat. I'm going to turn and frame out my cushions and then slowly relax my chest. The more my chest I get onto the cushion, the more of a twist I'm making through the spine. And the more of the left side of your chest or your left shoulder you're releasing down, that's just a nice way to relax and, and soften it. And take three minutes on this first side. Just notice what cheek you have down. I usually recommend starting off by having your left cheek resting. If the spine and the neck and the shoulders feel okay, you could turn your gaze away and rest your right cheek. But notice if you've gone too far, if that feels crunchy, just turn the gaze back in the same direction as the knees. You really want this to be soft and gentle on the neck and the shoulders.
Start to slide your hands underneath your shoulders. Really gently press your way up. I'll take a moment to pause in between sides, just bringing the back body, back of the head to an elevated cushion. You can stretch your legs out long. You can also keep your knees bent. Pause here. Deep belly breathing. Bring your awareness into your body. Where are you feeling sensation right now? Start to set up for our second side. So we're going to turn that right hip close to the short edge of your cushion, turning your knees off in the opposite direction. Keep your knees wide so the sole of the right foot just above your left knee. And you're turning your whole torso to frame out your cushion. Your hands are on either side and slowly lower the chest. Maybe it's the right cheek first all the way down. Again, the more of your chest you get onto the bolster, the more of a twist sensation you're gonna get. Choose a comfortable position for your neck and your shoulders. Just settle in, let the body be still and heavy.
Take your time, bring your palms underneath your shoulders. Really slowly unwind. And turn to face your feet. You can stretch the legs forward, lie back on your elevated cushion. You want to add on that little bit of movement with the knees moving side to side or swaying the feet side to side, you can. From here, we'll begin to move into our final Shavasana. And there's a lot of different ways you can take Shavasana. You can take your legs up the wall, you can take your legs up and over the chair. You can roll a blanket or slide pillows underneath the backs of the knees. You can take a belly down Shavasana if you like. Just starting to think about what would be the most nourishing and supportive shape to put your body into for this last five or six minutes. You do have something to place over the eyes to block out any extra light, that might be nice. Maybe a little extra padding underneath the back of the head, like a folded blanket. When I take a folded blanket underneath the back of my head, I give it a little tuck and roll at the end to provide a little support for the back of the neck, the cervical spine. Start to settle into whatever shape you're going to make. Make your adjustments. Be sure that you're going to be warm enough. If you need an extra blanket or socks or layer, grab that. And then arriving onto your back in stillness. Slightly moving the shoulders away from the ears. And slightly tilting the chin towards the chest. Letting your back teeth part. Your tongue widen at the base of your mouth. Let your eyes close and sink heavy into their sockets. Feel the weight of your body resting heavy on whatever you're lying on. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Open your mouth, exhale. Feeling the whole front body soften into the whole back body. Every single muscle, fiber, cell completely relaxed.
these last few minutes in your final shape, I'd like to share a reading from a book called Meditations from the Mat. Nothing that you need to do, just listen, just be. I recently read a description of the training that Crazy Horse, the famous Sioux warrior, received as a young boy. During the day, he would roam the plains with his friends, learning to hunt, ride, and take care of himself, while also providing food for the less fortunate in his community. In the evening, his father would question him closely on every detail of what he had seen that day. Which side of the trees had lighter bark? Which side had more regular branches? What was the meaning of the jay's call? When the swallows flew, were their mouths full or empty? A 19th century Native American living on the plains knew the medicinal properties of more than 2,000 plants. The manner in which this education was achieved was simple. The young Native American was expected to pay attention to the living beings in his world, to actually see what he was looking at. In yoga, the first step when we enter a posture is to establish our gaze. Our eyes literally rest at one point. The gaze is mindful. We are meant to actually see what we are looking at. Yoga uses the senses, sight, sound, sensation, to bring us into the present. This practice of drishti, or gaze point, is the same as the old Native American practice of teaching children to see what they are looking at. As a species, we have a wondrous heritage of connectedness, of communication, of being present, of celebrating the fact that we are at once engulfed by and at one with the divine. Our yoga practice allows us to practice in this tradition. Our willingness to see what we are looking at allows us to perpetuate it. you have more time to spare in your day, please feel free to stay in your Shavasana as long as you like. If you're ready to move on, start to just slowly wiggle through fingertips and toes. Maybe you begin to move your head side to side. On an inhalation, can you stretch your arms up and overhead, breathing into the length of the body, pointing your toes away from your face. On an exhalation, can you bend your knees and begin to come off to a side, pausing in fetal position for a few moments. See if you can stay there with the eyes closed or a soft gaze, continuing to foster that internal awareness. And when you're ready with as little effort as possible, rising up to a comfortable seat. In your seat, let it be supported. Feel your sits bones root down, feel your spine grow tall. We'll practice our Veloma breath three times through. Take one hand to your low belly and one hand to your heart. This is your three-part inhale and your one long exhale. 
begin to breathe in from the base of the spine to the navel. Breathe in again, navel to heart. Breathe in again, heart to the crown. Exhale all the air out. Breathing in, base of the spine to the navel. Navel to the heart. Heart to the crown. Exhale all the air out. One last time on your own. Bring the hand that's at the low belly to stack on top of the hand that's at the heart. Bow your chin to your chest. Take a moment here to honor your effort and your practice. And with reverence and gratitude to our teachers, past, present, future, and most importantly to the teacher within your own heart. Namaste.